Where have you been? You talking to me? It would have been helpful for the servants to know whether you were going to be in for lunch or not. I never eat lunch. You do know that, Marion. We've been having the same conversation for the last 20 years. Oh. Oh, no, that's gone in. I'm going to make some improvements to the estate. I thought I'd run them past your father, so you know what's going on. In case I might have an opinion. So, yes. So, I'm going to construct an ornamental walk. From the garden gate, down through the hall ing, down the side of Calfcroft and into Lower Brook ing. Why? Then at the top of Lower Brook ing, because it will look elegant, Marion. I'm going to build an ornamental moss house, or a chaumiere, just a small one. What for? A what? A chaumiere. Like a summer house. Like an like ornamental... A shed. Then, at the same time, I'm going to pull up all of the hedges in all of the fields below the hall. Why, though? Really? Yes. To create more of a park. A parkland. Because, Marion, I'm sick of the place looking like an old farm. It is an old farm. Shipton Hall is the oldest house in Halifax. It dates back, as you know, to the reign of Henry V and Agincourt. It's where the first manorial courts in Halifax were held. It is not, and never has been, a farm. And it saddens me, deeply, that people might look at it like that. So I would thank you very much not to refer to it as such. We are Listers, and Shibden Hall is our ancestral home. And it should always reflect the quiet dignity of our ancient lineage. I'm sorry that we argued before I went away. I, I said things I regret and I apologise. I don't like it when we argue any more than you do. No, I know that and I'm sorry. I know you think it doesn't affect me, but it does. That's why I'm apologising. It upsets my equilibrium. I know, it upsets mine too and I'm sorry. There was one thing I, I did say before I went off to Market Wheaton, which may have overstepped the mark, but at the same time wasn't entirely inaccurate. I believe Aunt Anne has mentioned Mr. Abbott to you. Anne. Anne. His name did escape her lips, yes. I'd like to invite him to tea. Father says I can, in fact. Really? He'd like me to. Well then, do you need my permission? It was more your blessing and an undertaking that you'd be civil. To him. You find me no obstacle to something you have very much at heart, Marion, as long as it's an intelligent choice. But one would only be doing one's duty as an elder sister to question the pedigree of a man who makes rugs. Anne. Good morning. Mum. I need to talk to you. Hmm? Not now. How's Miss Walker? On the men. Tomorrow, uh, Mr. Abbott is coming to tea. What time? Four o'clock. Will you be here? No. Now, come on. Let's go downstairs. We can't keep avoiding Miss Park Hill. She was no happier after you left this morning, despite all the trouble you took with her. Well, then, I shall redouble my efforts. I'll have to. I can't go home. Marion's got Mr. Abbott round for tea. It's such a shame Anne's missed you. Mm, yes, I was looking forward to meeting your elder daughter, Captain Lister. You hear so many stories about her down in Halifax. Uh, of course, uh, I always take them with a pinch of salt. Uh, I'm sure I'd get on with her perfectly well. I'll talk to anybody. I'm not by inclination a radical, but the fact is people are becoming like whether people like us are reconciled to it or not. And those of us who do, perhaps, live in the past, need to see which way the wind's blowing or you watch. Well, you missed Mr. Abbott. Who? Oh. Was that yesterday? Yes, how was it? It went very well.
Are you sure? Mr. Washington's been looking for you. He says there are a lot of men up at Brearley Hill filling in the Rawson's Willie Hill pit. He says they're demolishing all the sheds and pulling up the access road. The access road's on my land. That's what... Our land. Yes. That's what Mr. Washington said. He said they've got no right to touch the... road. And you missed Mr. Abbott and his mother. You ill as well, Marion? No, I feel perfectly well, thank you, Aunt. You're quiet. I've not heard anything from Mr. Abbott for nearly three weeks. Oh dear. Do you think he's. He did mention, as he left, that he'd visited twice and both times Miss Lister had failed to appear. It's you he's interested in, not me. You are Miss Lister of Shipton Hall. You own the place, as you never tire of reminding everyone. It is clearly a snub, especially when a place has been set at the table, if you choose not to turn up. I can only assume he felt particularly humiliated in front of his mother, who was very polite and very well-mannered. Yes, she was very... She was very quiet. He isn't good enough for you. You just don't want me to get married because it frightens you that one day I could have a greater claim to Shipton than you. Thomas Beachman, how do you do? I'm Miss Lister's new groom. York, initially, to collect my carriage from the North Cliffs, and then on to London via Leamington with Mrs. Lawton. Then across the water to Paris, and then either south in a ramble in the Auvergne, and on to Rome, or north. Copenhagen, St. Petersburg, Moscow. I haven't decided yet. That's, uh, that all sounds very... Good. So you need to go and see Mr. Lowe in Halifax to be measured up. I should provide two waistcoats, two jackets, two pairs of trousers, one overcoat, one pair of boots, a hat. Go back into the kitchen, get some breakfast, and tell Mrs. Cordingley if anyone's heading into Halifax this morning, they're to take you with them. I'm going into Halifax this morning. Ah, there you go, Thomas. My sister will sort you out. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. That's a lovely face. Hmm? You groom. Oh. I'm wondering whether Rawson was drunk when he said that to Marion. At ten o'clock in the morning? I hear he often is drunk when he's presiding over the bench. How oh, disgusting. What a sorry town that makes us. Having a man like us in charge of so many of its institutions. 